I'm worried, uh, let's be honest, because what we're doing is not working. And we see in the world of business the concerns we have about Houthis attacking shipping in the Red Sea, driving prices of oil and goods. We see terrorist attacks against Israel. We see most recently, Tom, as you allude to, the attack that killed three brave American servicemen and women in Jordan. So we are not deterring Iran. What the article I wrote for Bloomberg Opinion does is sketch out a campaign that we need to undertake that I am uh, hopeful will ultimately deter Iran. Uh, Paul wants to get into that, but uh, Jim, you've been so, so, so far out front on a game theory basis, and folks, a cliche is expect the unexpected, but you have stated that in our complexity of military uh, force, technology, and politics, that it's the unexpected, like mixing up drones coming in or out of a base in Jordan, it's the unexpected that will kill us, that will harm us, that will put, put us at risk. How do we defend against the next unexpected? Um, for starters, Tom, we look back at history and identify those moments, those hinge moments in the case we're discussing of military operations, the Battle of Agincourt, where English longbowmen slaughter French knights in their supposedly impervious armor. Uh, Pearl Harbor, where we are stunned by a Japanese surprise attack. Uh, we look at those hinge moments when airplanes, radar um, came on the scene and changed everything. We are in that moment now, and we're talking about the Middle East, but I would argue equally so what's happening on the battlefields of Ukraine. So A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court is a book about innovation and leading through these kind of pivot moments, we are definitely in one where technology and security are coming together. Admiral, I want to go right to your Bloomberg opinion piece yesterday because it had such an impact. I'm sure it had quite the impact in Washington at the Pentagon, at the White House. But basically the summary is from your opinion piece, a deadly drone attack that cost American lives requires a swift, precise, and meaningful military response. Could you summarize what type of response you think this attack uh, warrants? It's kind of the Goldilocks phenomena, Paul. In other words, we've been uh, trying to curtain this by pinprick attacks, by uh, tit for tat, small beer. Um, at the other end of that spectrum is whistling jets overhead Tehran. I don't think we're there yet. We need to be in the middle, that Goldilocks place. And here's what it includes, cyber attacks, better intelligence collection, going after Iranian assets, but not inside Iran yet. We can still go after the Iranian Revolutionary Guard at sea, ashore. They are training, organizing, equipping, and directing Houthis, Hezbollah, the Iraqi uh, Shia who have killed our American soldiers, we need to go after Iran directly, but not yet inside Iran. That's the essence of the article. And Admiral, I know you, you said even suggesting perhaps a five to eight day concerted campaign. What would that campaign entail in your estimation? I think we'd bring a second U.S. aircraft carrier back into the region. Recall we had two there right after October 7th. We pulled one out. Uh, Iranian bad behavior continues. So maritime assets, we have a lot of air power in the Gulf, in Qatar and the base uh, near Doha, uh, al -Udid. We would bring more refueling aircraft, more fighter jets, bring our allies into this. And then it would be, I'd say one to two weeks of sustained bombing against Iranian targets again, outside Iran at this point. And yeah. then finally, Paul, we would be preparing the battle plan if we have to go inside Iran. Let's hope we don't get to that point. I think the Iranians would back down in the face of a, a truly strong U.S. response. Coming to you commercial free in this hour on YouTube, Bloomberg Podcast. It is Bloomberg Surveillance. We welcome all of you across the nation on CarPlay, Apple CarPlay as well. With us, James Stravitas is public service with the Navy and of course his work uh, in Brussels with NATO 
uh, as well. James Stavridis, I want to go to Brett Crozier, a captain in your magnificent book. Folks, I can't say enough about to risk it all, nine conflicts in the crucible of our leadership in the Navy. Yes, it has admirals in it, but as Stravitas does, there's there's a, a lieutenant commander in there as well, and a, a, a cook third class. I love that. Let's go to Brett Crozier, and this is the reality of his career ended with COVID and the uproar and the Theodore Roosevelt. But tell us about Brett Crozier as a kind of preparation, uh, James Trevitas, that we need if we're going to take on Iran. Uh, Brett Crozier, uh, fighter pilot, also a, a superb targeteer. He worked for me as a captain, selecting the targets we struck in Libya. So a consummate combat pilot and operator, also a terrific leader. He unfortunately, and with bad luck, became the captain of an aircraft carrier at the very beginning of COVID. He sacrificed his career to protect his crew. He's someone extremely admirable. And if you right. read the story of Brett Crozier in To Risk It All, you'll see how we, we can and must take care of our people while we conduct these right. kind of bad operations. Are we too extended? Ian Bremer in Eurasia Group, Admiral, had a spectacular chart on the dispersion, including reservists from Georgia, across all of the Middle East. It's almost as if the Bremer worry and his top risk came due. Are we too naive in our unprotected dispersion across a broader Eastern Mediterranean? No, I think this brings us back to where we started this conversation, Tom, which is to say, if we recognize the technology of the moment and are aware of it, we can do a better job defending ourselves, point one, point two, a lot of this can be done from the sea. Our carriers are invulnerable, essentially. And point three, we can uh, fuse together the work with our allies, partners, and friends in the region. So we're not alone and, uh, and afraid out there. We are with allies, partners, and friends. We need to leverage that in a better fashion. Admiral, again, I'm just going to reference your opinion piece from yesterday. And again, uh, you can read it on the Bloomberg Terminal uh, Certainly, and you can go to bloombergopinion.com slash opinion, uh, bloomberg.com slash opinion to find it on the uh, website. Do you believe, Admiral, that some of the steps and policies you laid out in your opinion piece, does that have a welcome re re reception with this administration, with Congress? I think it will. And as usual with any issue in today's America, there'll be plenty of folks who are advocating a very radical go downtown Tehran tonight kind of strikes. I think that's premature. We might get there, let's right. hope not. On the other side, there will be those who say, just pull out of the Middle East, let, let all of that just fall apart. I think what I've laid out is something in the middle that makes sense that will avoid a wide regional war, but will cause Iran to back down. Okay, uh, Admiral, you know, we're, gonna, we're running out of time here in a bit. I want you to sell right now to this nation, and everybody's listening, the one guy in Congress that actually probably can talk about this and calm down the Let's Bomb Tehran crew. And that's a senator from Rhode Island, Jack Reed. How important is Jack Reed in this debate? Well, I love Jack Reed uh, because, first of all, he's a man of normal height, about five feet, five inches <laughs> tall, my height. Uh, number two, he's a military guy. He's a veteran. He went to West Point. I'll forgive him that. <laughs> he, is, he is at the top of the list, Tom. You're absolutely correct in his strategic vision, his understanding of the balance we need to strike here. And I think uh, the more we listen to the Jack Reed's of the Congress, the right. better our chances are of steering through these rough waters.